workers. So those, these are the people who are like the, the, the vice presidential group. There's like six of them that help the, the executive branch kind of decide on things. Six years ago when they decided it was going to be in Boston, they were freaking out that you can have either a nor'easter, bitter cold. Oh, yeah. Um, you can have, you know, flights canceled. Boston's not a huge airport. It's just crummy weather. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, there's a conference I speak at PLRB, which I'm going to uh, in March. It's in D.C. this year. But they rotate around, too. And one every five or six years, it's in Boston. Hey, it's JT and, and Leanne. Join us for the Heart Boston. and Home Radio this Show. Brought end. to you by Exit oh, no. Sundays at 4 p.m. on Smart Talk. No WCGO, AM and FM. Uh, welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki and of course. And, and if you're watching on Facebook, please rejoin us right now. We had to st- stop the broadcast. We're back up. Yeah. Okay. We'll uh, we'll be, we'll be talking to management about that later. Uh, we're very pleased to have in our studio. I keep saying that. I got to stop saying that. Hey, in the studio, we've got. Hey, Rick- welcome to the studio. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Meteorologist nice studio. Rick DeMaio and John Lee are and here. Lots of goodies. And they brought their goodies, and we we were just talking about the lawsuit that. So basically, uh, don't try to sue the government. Don't sue the big companies because you'll <laughs> lose. And uh, you know, we just keep rolling along. Now, see, I want to go back to the conference. Rick, you just mm-hmm. came from, what, right. 5,000, did you say? 5,600 meteorologists, yeah. The AMS, it's the <laughs> annual, if you join us late, it's the annual conference. Um, and, and when we say annual, um, it's it's an annual conference of conferences. So every throughout the year, you'll have like a climate change and variability conference, you'll have broadcasting conference, you'll have severe weather, uh, you'll have hydrology. These take place in various parts of the United States throughout the year. There'll be like three or four of them. But when you have your, if you want to call it your joint session, um, typically you'll have literally almost 50 different conferences taking place all at once. So it's it's hilarious to watch people go into a room at 8.30 and it says, padded recognition of mesoscale convective turbulence-induced <laughs> outflow boundaries in the middle part of the United States. And you sit down what, there. What? 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 Hey, that was a name of mine three years ago. Don't diss it. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you're sitting down there and you listen to the person, and, and they're up there just literally going, and this is what I found, and this is what I found. You're going, oh, no. You see people reaching for their phone. They're looking through their book. I'm, I'm serious. This happens. Yeah. There's some bad talk. Um, and it's not that the, the information is bad. It's just the presentation is not, sure, not like high quality. Yeah. And, and, and that'll happen. But you literally you start looking. You go, okay, I'm in room 206A, and I want to go to room 158B. And it's literally like an eight-minute walk because the Boston <laughs> Convention Center huge. is absolutely yeah. huge. Wow. So each talk will generally last for about 13 minutes. You generally have 15, but you stop at 13, and you stop for you know, Q&A. So you have sessions that run from 8.30 to 10.00. 10.30 to 12, 1 to um, one thirty to 4, and then you have the poster sessions. Each day there's a poster session that goes from 4 to 6. So if you don't get your, your talk in the oral presentation, you have a poster session, which is, I think, really, really cool because you get to stand in front of a poster and you can talk to someone mm-hmm. directly about what's going on. So... Those are the sessions. Th- those but, are the but, sessions, but, but, yeah. The sh- but 5,000 meteorologists, there's a lot of schmoozing. Oh. And what are they talking about? So, what, what, you know, what, what, was what, are consu- the themes? what was consuming here, everybody? Here, here, here's the thing. I ended up going to mainly aviation with a little bit of climate change. Yeah. And, and some of the best parts of the schmoozing is after the talk. I, I call it the hallway connection. I was connecting already with a meteorologist from Seoul, South Korea. He forecast for uh, he was forecasting for the Royal Air Force, um, RAKS, I think it was, and then also Korean Airlines, as well as a guy named Paul Williams from University of Reading in the UK. We already exchanged emails about how we want to collaborate on stuff in the future, uh-huh. as well as two or three meteorologists 
from NCAR out in Boulder about stuff that I want to do and stuff that I showed them. So I'm already like, I have like 10 emails that I had to follow up on. And that's where you begin to build some sort of a of, of collaborative effort, research, you kind of focus in on what you want to do. You say, that's what I did. I want to do something as well. And and on top of that, it's all about networking. Yeah, um, and, yeah, and, that is, and that is the best thing about it. And then even though the conference ends each day at 6, Monday night, you go out and you're mm-hmm. having fun. It was a national championship. You're there watching it with people. Yeah. Tuesday night is university night where all the universities have their own uh, sort of alumni get-togethers. Um, and then Wednesday night, you have the main event, which is the awards dinner uh, and then the centennial celebration. So the conference usually kicks off on Sunday. Gina McCarthy was there, gave the keynote address, and it ends on Thursday um, I had to leave Wednesday afternoon because I had to get back and teach. So I missed a, a you know, half a mm. week of teaching. So what are uh, I get? What the? F- <laughs> yeah, the phone is, is ringing. Source? It's all oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, nice. You know, it's. Do you have health care? Yeah, yeah, Do you have yeah. any preconditions? No, 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 no. You don't even want to know what this. <laughs> is. Oh, I love <laughs> answering those things. I go, yeah, I have eight STDs in the last year. No, what do you, you know? I, I and they <laughs> hang up right away. I know who it is, and he's going to call right back because he does has no clue that I'm doing a radio show. And, so, so I'm getting, broadcasting. Uh, yeah. I'm so, broadcasting. Right. Uh, uh, but I want to know. And it, a lot of policy and a lot of law there as well. And what? Yeah. And so what I want to know is what are people talking about when they look at 2019? What it, what comes to the forefront? That, and they say we have to do or gosh, did you do you realize this? What what were they meeting well, around? Well, you know, the funny thing about it, Mike and Peg, is there's no disagreement on what's happening. Believe it or not, there's no political discussion. Zero. It's all about what you have found out in the last year and what we have to do about it from a standpoint of getting better research. When you get to the question of how do we stop it from happening, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of that during the conference per se. There, there really is, and that's more like in the in the aisles, in the corridors, in the hallways, that kind of stuff. But uh-huh. there's zero disagreement. No one, no one, no one discounts the science. Okay. It, it's almost like, yeah, we know Christmas comes on the 25th. Why do we keep bringing this up? There, there's zero conversation about that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, no war on Christmas, all right? Yeah. But yeah, what, yeah. Climate what are the standout things that they're talking about? Certain certain topics have to be getting more attention. Than I, others. I mean, are they talking about the fires in Australia? Are they talking about the flooding in Chicago? Well, are they talking about flooding in Venice? I mean, what are they talking about? Well, it, it, it does kind of get funny because during the debate, you heard Pete Buttigieg said, and the fires in Australia were so bad, it cre- they created tornadoes. We're like, yeah, that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you hear candidates try to make like something worse sounding because it makes them sound like they're smarter, that actually backfires in the meteorological community. It's like, <laughs> like, 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 don't talk about tornadoes created by fire. We know that that happens. But a judge just lost five thousand votes. Well, it's yeah. just like it's like you don't have to say that. We know that 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 happens, right? I mean, to be fair, though, I mean, he's talking to uh, the general public too, and all that. So if you you know you make it sound not make it sound, but if you explain how serious the situation is too. Mm-hmm. I mean, that may convince other people or make somebody like sit up and go, I mean, yeah. it's yeah, crazy. I it's all weather and tornadoes. Yeah. And Unfortunately, yeah. much of the general public yeah. okay, don't understand there, it. There's a fire in Australia. Next. Yeah. Well, and, and they don't see the, right. the context. Well, the but, animals, too, has been. That's going to Well, the, yeah, yeah, I think that's as what is real. It's interesting. Oh, it's from, not, a, it's not from the an people. ecosystem it's, standpoint. It's, oh, yeah. It's the animals. That oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. you got a koala on fire, and people yeah. respond to that in a way they don't to when they hear that. All these different, you know, thousands of people had to go to the beaches because their homes were going to catch yeah. fire. Yeah. You know what? Or, or I, 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 a bee's I, about to go extinct because its its only home was burned. To, yeah. to answer your question, Mike, a lot of geeky scientists don't get emotional about the results, or don't get emotional about the eventual consequences. I I don't know why, but but they they don't because they're scientists, maybe. You know? Yeah, but I mean, I'm a scientist, and I get emotional about it, and I get geeky that's why about it. Why we love it. you? I, 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 <laughs> but but that's actually a small percentage, unless you ask them deep down inside, how do you feel about this? And I go, well, you know, it is terrible, and I really do believe that there's something. But they don't come out and say, this is why we need to do something about it. Yeah. If if you did have that, people would say, wait a minute, that's not part of a scientific argument because that's supposed to be objective yeah. and and devoid of emotion, exactly, yeah. and subjectivity at that point. But in this side, that's where that conversation does come mm-hmm. up, without a doubt, without a doubt. And one of the things I love to do the best is I go and I see some of my older 
um, instructors and professors at Wisconsin, like a Dr. John Young, who's now running the climatology um, program for the state of Wisconsin, still on zero budget because the previous governor took all that away. And Tony Evers, the current governor, is trying to get it back. I go, Dr. Young, I took large-scale dynamics with you back in 1985, and you've been around for years. Is the climate changing? And he'll look at me and go, of course it is. And he's the first one who will come out and say how horrible it is about the administration and, and that they have their head up there, you know what, um, and, and they're not doing anything about it. So you'll find those people out there. But they're not running around with the with the flag on their shoulder talking about it. But if you ask them personally, oh, without yeah, a doubt, yeah, 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 yeah. They'll, they'll without say, a doubt, this without is doubt. definitely happening. So, yeah. what was the main message then in Gina McCarthy's keynote? Um, well, the the conference was all about links, L I N K S, which was learning, integrating um, into. I forget what the end was. I think it was just learning integration into knowledge. That's where the K comes. So we know a lot of research, but how to get the knowledge out there on a much broader platform. Mm -hmm. And Gina McCarthy's speech was all about how to get more and more people involved from a younger standpoint. And I think she lit a lot of fire and a lot of people, you know what, again, she was the one who wears her, you know what, on her sleeve. sleeve. Absolutely, yeah. (laughs) No, it's a heart. A heart. It's, yeah. it's not yeah. a bad thing. We can say that on the radio. Mm-hmm. All right. That's meteorologist Rick DeMaio, John Lee. Uh, we've got more when we come back. It's the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. We're all over Facebook right now, too. Yay! I used to have more hair. Now, actually, that was one of the comments um, that had come back in uh, about the climate case was the heart versus the brain. You know, that that, right. that the judges were saying, we know in our hearts that this is the right thing. Oh, yeah. But, oh, they, they, but mentally, we can't do it. Right. Right. They exactly said that we, under, we know the climate is uh, you know, the climate is changing. We know there's going to be serious consequences. You know, we know the government has been done either. Yeah. <laughs> Have some coffee. Have a cinnamon roll. <laughs> I look like someone just told me I had my, my colon removed. Um, <laughs> No, but but it, it is interesting, Mike, is that whenever I, I, I go to these talks, there's very little emotion that comes out of it from from the younger scientists. I, I feel like they feel like it's not their job to do that. Or they're afraid. They are, they're afraid can I, can to. Can I do the same thing? Yeah. They're very take much, can I do the same very thing? much take a reticent about expressing their yeah. opinions on that. I, I, it's a very non-opinionated uh, forum. I think there's an article in there somewhere of of putting the emotion into not not you know the the smart emotion right into the science right right you and know not not the koalas are dying but the right. smart emotion and into it. if I would have went to more of the broadcasters conferences and I can send you some stuff if you want to talk about this in the future oh definitely is is how how to better as a broadcast meteorologist talk to your audience and snippets about climate change yeah. and the impact. And a lot of a lot of kids going to school are really afraid to. Yeah. Because they may be on the last six months of their contract. They may be, you know, owned by a company that's very conservative. And someone sees that and goes, I don't like that. News director gets an email, general manager gets an email and they go, You're out. And they don't yeah. want to lose their job. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do it in a way that's succinct and delicate, but yet at the same time, science. Yeah. You know, right, we got like nine minutes coming up here. Uh, including the weather. Across, <laughs> yeah, the weather's we'll easy. Do a, yeah, weather's easy. But what, what do you want to get to that we haven't discussed yet? This is your, this is your segment. I, I talk too much. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I guess we can talk about... Uh, well, I didn't talk about the other the other cases. There's the whole... Uh, I mean, how do you know attribution science? You can jump into that too, right? You know, I mean, there's one about how difficult that is and how it's becoming a better, you know, it's becoming a growing topic, growing understanding. Attribution, yeah. Extreme event attribution. Yeah. And, that. and there's a... Uh, oh. Okay, we can... Cause it, and I can talk about one, you know, that one case I really looked at is the human rights, it's like Syria. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's climate change. Oh, right, right, right. But it's, Although I, because I've read not things be. about Syria, some people say it's, there's it's things climate. attributed to a science that is actually creating more personal <laughs> and human calamities than we see Right. In the scientific yeah. data, is yeah, how, is how that comes but out. But Syria might not even be a, a good case for it. I mean, there's a couple studies on that too. So it's, 
you know, of what they looked at. Wow. Stuff. But that, that'd be good. What? There were 2,792 oral presentations and 1,562 poster presentations. Yeah. Hmm. At the event, I'm trying to figure out what links actually. Yeah, because I, I know it was learning, integrating knowledge to science. I think it was, but if you can find it somewhere, because there's always a theme. Make sure to hire a state licensed electrical contract. The installation of that charger will require a permit in most municipalities. So make sure. Matter of fact, one of the talks I saw was, is there an increase in in turbulence at the upper levels of the atmosphere due to climate change? And one of the things I'm going to be collaborating on with this guy from South Korea and the UK is on that particular topic. Because we've seen it. I've seen it with the three typhoons in the West Pacific and these hurricanes moving further. And I have them. 95.9, the exclusive home for the Dave Ramsey Show in Chicago. Welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki, and we're wrapping up our discussion here. Hope you've been following. Uh, uh, to all our folks on Facebook, we apologize. We've made you jump around today. <laughs> oh, well. But they're still there. I yes, mean, I'm looking they at are. It, and they've all come back. So uh, we're officially up on all those streaming vehicles. And in the studio, we have Rick DeMaio and John Lee. We're talking meteorology and, and climate change. Um, you, and, and some of the best conversations, as always, happen when we're in commercial break. Yeah. But that's why you, you watch on Facebook. And and I think we're going to continue at least one of them. We were talking about how um, broadcast journalists uh, can bring more emotion into getting the message across. And there was a similar article in Columbia Journalism Review on how the media in general needs to be delivering these messages. Both. Yeah, they, they always seem to be a little bit reticent. They always, like, tiptoe through it. Uh, especially your your national media, like, and could this be related to climate change? You know, <laughs> yeah, they do stuff like that, it. right? But the links, Peg, you, you found what like, and, and you found what L I N K S yeah. stands for. So the 2020 theme of the A M S um, conference, linking information to knowledge and society, mm -hmm. or links. Mm -hmm. All right, and well, uh, but that that's big because oftentimes the research is held up someplace in the ivory tower of a university mm -hmm. goes to a publication, but no one ever really sees that. I mean, how many people outside of the meteorological community read the Journal of Weather and Forecasting? Yeah, not you know, many. Very little. Yeah. And then sometimes if you do, I got a scone on the side of my mouth here. Um, <laughs> sometimes if you do, it's part of that that then's put in Nature magazine like nine months later. Yeah. And it says, according to NOAA. And they'll take, like, a paragraph out of it. Which is then broken down to something else, which is then broken down and finally yeah. shows exactly. up on the news, as scientists say. Exactly. You made a good point. And, and, and I would hope that there, at this conference there would be a seminar for meteorologists to say, how to talk about climate change without getting fired from your television <laughs> yeah, station. Yeah, and I, and I think that was a few. Of them. I didn't go to those because I kind of think I know how to do that already. But Mike, <laughs> Mike Nelson, well, I still remember 12 years ago when I was at Fox— in my one of my the, the last year I was there, I posted a map that shows the loss of sea ice, and I said, and look at the way our temperature has been going upward. And I go, could this be related to global warming? Blah blah blah. And I was walking down the hall after the show. The managing editor came over to me and goes, I noticed you had some stuff there about loss of sea ice and global warming. He goes, we didn't talk about that in a meeting. I'm like, did we have to? He goes, well, that you just made. An assertion that the Earth is warming due to the fact that there's less sea ice. I'm like, yeah, it's science. He goes, yeah, but some people might not agree with that. I'm like, I don't care about those people. <laughs> right. This is science. <laughs> but here he, here he was, the manager and editor, oh, challenging me on science when he never challenged me on anything before. It's which like, meant that he yeah. was approaching it from a subjective standpoint and not objective. Uh, yeah. I had, this is related, it's not exactly the same thing, but at a radio station I was at, I was talking about frogs. and Very uh, controversial. A very <laughs> controversial. And, and afterward, the assistant director came up to me and he said, what do frogs have to do with gardening? And I said, and I just, uh, I realized that there was handwriting on the wall at that point. It's like, if you can't connect the science of our fauna 
with what you're doing in your backyard. We got a problem here because it's all mm-hmm. connected, as you know, Rick. And, and you that's know, where Giant. links exactly. and that's where links comes in. What Peg was talking yeah. about. Yeah, and I we, think we, we need to keep talking about yeah, this. Yeah, we need to do a better job of linking science and knowledge to society. And that's where that comes in. Uh, John, you wanted to bring something up uh, uh, as we wrap up here. Yeah, I guess real real fast. And, you know, we talk about linking uh, specific events to climate change and that. I mean, there's a, a lot of times it's easy to say, well, this is as a result of climate change and that. Especially like in the legal community, there's, you know, causation you have to talk about. And so one of the things, and Rick knows, there's a growing science. It's called, you know, attribution science. So extreme event attribution, trying to say, how any particular event is influenced or related in a way to anthropogenic climate change, human-induced climate change, not just climate change. Figure in From a natural standpoint. From a natural standpoint, right. yeah. But sure. So you can say that specifically because of what humans are doing, this event maybe occurred. Right. And real fast, one of the big examples, I gave a presentation for Human Rights Watch. Um, I'm on their Chicago committee. And it was all about that, is, you know, for human right events and a climate change event, how can you say that this this human rights situation is linked to climate change? And Syria came up as one of the big topics, and there's been several studies done on that because um, that's usually one that's brought up as about you know as a link there. Well, when someone delved really delved into it as far as the drought and all that, they found that over this period where the migration uh, before the conflict, the drought was really centered in the eastern part of the country, which is more desert, less populated. The areas where a lot of the activities near Damascus and all that. They actually had to slightly below, and some areas had near normal precipitation. So, and then to so link the two that, weren't, weren't necessarily not were, necessarily. Other studies yeah. say, yeah, this is, but you know, it's conflict, migration, and climate change. You know, so it's interesting. So, comment. when you say there's a war in Syria because of climate change, you maybe really, maybe not. There, you better back that up. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's not that there's not a war, but did climate there change war, make yeah. the war worse? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and getting back to Rogers Park here, do you think those people? <laughs> it all goes back to Rogers right. Park. Do you think those people care right now about whether or not there's climate change? Yeah, no. I, no, 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 I, I, no, no. They they don't. And what what's the reason? They care why about they, their basement is flooded. Right. Climate they change no is out there. It's not tangible. Right. What what's what's tangible to them is the beach is gone. And the value of their property just went down. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't care about climate I change right now. If I connect it, it means other people connect it as well. Right. But I'm saying is the the lawyer, the real estate agent goes. I don't give a damn about the climate change right now. What are we going to do about the beach? Mm-hmm. In other words, the causation is so big right now. Their 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 number one concern is my my residential community in that building just lost fifty thousand dollars on each. But unit. you could make yeah. an argument from the climate change Without standpoint that there's nothing you can do yeah. about this. But. That's true as well in the short term. Got to be careful about right. that. Okay. In the and, short and term, and people don't want to hear. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. It's just like a 25 year old kid worried about cholesterol. A 75 year old person will. Yeah. A 25. Right. I don't care. I'm 25. A 75. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> right. Yeah. But even for the beach, you yeah. don't even. I mean, you don't have to even bring in climate change. It's you know, it's the proximate cause. What is it? the city didn't do something? Right. Then so you, right. Don't, I mean, right. you don't have to talk right. about the big picture. Right. You can even focus in on. And and I'm not uh, saying don't worry about. It. I'm like yeah. I do worry about it, but in the short term, right now, that's not their. All right. And, and maybe I can say one thing, and then we'll get to a forecast. Is yeah. that in the old days you would just f- f- think about what what is the city doing or not doing? Now we get to overlay it with you have to look at climate change as well. It's one more thing to right. add on top of this. Right. All right, because yeah. that may the, affect. What and they, and, and they the planning it. has to be the totally planning. different. Right. And they knew that this was happening. Did they do enough? And the answer is no. All right. Quick forecast. All right. Cold today, cold tomorrow, 30s by Wednesday, rain Thursday night into Friday. These will be the two coldest days over the next two weeks. <laughs> All right. Them apples. For the whole winter. And, and my phone's ringing two again. Two weeks. There we go. <laughs> for the next, the coldest day for the next two weeks. And then. These two days will be the coldest two days for the next two weeks. But something might happen later on. You never well, know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Uh, never know. <laughs> thanks to John Lee and Rick DeMaio and all the other folks who are on the show today. Uh, I don't have time. Curtis to go. Leopardo. Oh, good. You've got Ryan it. Ryan Anderson. All right. And Until, Benison's. And uh, yeah. Andrew and Ellie. Till next time, go green or go home. Uh, what? Is that it? Yes, it's over. How'd you like it? I don't know. I slept through the whole thing. Well, you didn't miss much. <laughs>